We're now live on Facebook. I see, I see. I'm going to share it and then we will get started. We are posted. Well, hello everyone. It is 6 p.m. on Tuesday, December 15th of 2020, um, our last meeting of the year. And this is a special called meeting. It was advertised as such. Um, and just like we have every, almost every other meeting this year, we do have to consider holding it virtually. Um, first, I will read what the special called meeting is for the purpose of. It is for the consideration of three items, including second reading on Ordinance 021254, which is appropriating funds for employee benefits, Resolution R2012-65, Resolution in support of the SIA grant for the improvement of three intersections for access to the City of Gallatin Industrial Park, um, Resolution R2012-66, a resolution appointing potentially someone as superintendent of public works and establishing the initial salary. Actually, it's four things. And the final thing was actually something I was supposed to bring up under other business last week and I failed to do so. And it's an application to close this street for First United Methodist, Methodist Church for a Christmas Eve outdoor service. And so those are the four things that we're gonna be considering this evening. First, I have to read the electronic meeting um, disclosure for you to consider. It says, pursuant to Governor Lee's executive orders number 16, number 34, number 51, number 60, and number 65, and the need to limit the community spread of COVID-19, the December 15th, 2020 special called Gallatin City Council meeting will be held by electronic means. The meeting will be live streamed to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of the council and the citizens of Gallatin. You may join the Zoom meeting if you wish to participate in the meeting at the link you see there on the screen. You can also find that link on Facebook and on our website at gallatintn.gov or by dialing 470-250-9358 or 470-381-2552. The webinar ID is 849-4972-9538. We are streaming live on Facebook and also on cable channel 19 as well as our website if you would like to view it there as well. But again, a reminder that if you wish to participate, i.e. comment, you must do so through the Zoom meeting platform. So with that, I will consider, or, or we will entertain a motion from the council. Motion approved. approved. Second. Okay, I have motion to approve by Councilman Alexander, a second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any discussion? All right. I will ask Ms. Kittrell to actually um, do double duty here, call the roll, and take a vote on this motion. So Ms. Kittrell, if you would do that, please. And, and council people, you may just say that you are here and I or nay on the motion. Vice Mayor Camp. Aye and present. Councilman Alexander. Present, yes. Councilman Fan. Yes, present. Councilman Fennell. Yes, here. Councilman Hayes. I couldn't hear you, Craig. Yes, present. Thank you. Councilwoman Love. Yes, here. And Councilman Overton. Yes, present. Mayor, we have a quorum and then the vote is seven to zero. Well, thank you very much. And so now we've already called the order and we will move along now to public recognition um, uh, we called the roll and we've called the meeting to order. So we'll move on to public recognition on agenda related items. This is the only public comment that we will have at this meeting because it is a special called meeting. There will be none at the end of the meeting. And so any comments this evening must be on one of the four agenda items. Um, if you are calling in, you will press star nine to raise your hand and indicate that you wish to speak. If you are on the Zoom um, platform, via computer, there is a raise your hand function at the bottom of the screen. I'm gonna turn the phone, uh, turn the meeting over to Jeff Henschel, who will give further instructions on how to unmute once you are recognized and um, take any people, any comments from anyone who wishes to speak. Mr. Henschel. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I 
The only caller we see here happens to be David Brown. I recognize that number, but if we do have someone who calls or is trying to call now, you would uh, do star nine to raise your hand and then star six to unmute your phone. And I'm looking over our panelists as well. There are messages on Facebook saying that they're having a problem joining the Zoom meeting. So anybody having a problem, if you could call in. Let me go back and repeat then the call-in numbers and we'll give it a few minutes since that's an issue for some reason. Um, the call-in number is 470-250-9358. And Jeff, you might put that back up on the screen so anyone that may be watching it can see that number because then they'll have to enter the webinar ID. Yeah, I think there you can see the numbers to call in. There are two options. It's that 470-250-9358 or 470-381-2552. And then the webinar ID is commenting that there's no sound on channel 19. Yep. They're also commenting that there's no sound on channel 19. I'll check that. Yep. They're also Lori, is that link accurate that's posted on um Just a second, I think. Hold on one second, please. Check the equipment associated with channel 19. I, I don't see any issues there, so I'm not sure why we're not getting sound there. No, the meeting ID is different. Um, it is 876-5251-7542. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that. that is, so, does that work for both the link and the call in, Lori? I am trying the um, the link to join a meeting. If you hold on one second. And Rosemary is saying the telephone number is not working either. Um, At one point, we did have two Zoom meetings for this special called meeting, and unfortunately, I think we have the wrong one there. Okay, I have just success called in. I called in that first number and entered the number 876-5251-7542. And I see where someone else tried to too and was able to join. 
So anyone that wishes to join should be able to, by calling in that 470-250-9358 number and entering 876-5251-7542. If you hold one second, I'll give you the phone number. Um, Yeah, it looks like you've got some people coming on now. I'm going to go ahead and Michelle and Pascal will go ahead. <laughs> Mayor, Mayor, would you like the phone number to repeat? Um, I've been repeating it a couple of times, 470-250-9358. Yes, ma'am. And the, and the webinar ID will be 876-5251-7542. And you'll press pound and they ask you to enter your attendee ID or just push pound and you just push pound. Okay, since you have someone with their hand raised, Mr. Henschel, do you just want to go ahead and let them comment and we'll see if anyone else joins in? Yes, ma'am. As I said, uh, Michelle and Pascal, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Um, can you hear me okay? <clears throat> yes. Okay, great. Thank you. It's Michelle Juvant, 1335 Long Hollow Pike. I wanted to make a comment on agenda item number one. Um, and I wanted to... Um, talk about, um, I would like to have our firefighters to get a, a bonus. Um, I, I wanted to ask all of you if, if recently, if any of you have gone to the fire halls to speak to any of our firefighters lately, and if you've asked them about how their quality of life is and if they're making enough money, and if you've asked them if the pandemic is negatively affecting their pay. Um, our Gallatin firefighters are underpaid and they rely on overtime hours to make up for that. And because of the pandemic, I'm told that they're losing out on their overtime hours and that it's negatively affecting them. And last week when, when you all were talking about the um, receiving the $600,000 in reimbursement funds from the state, and that our first responder salaries was what was submitted uh, for us to get that money. And I'd like to see some of those funds, um, those reimbursement funds be used to give our firefighters a hazard pay bonus at this time. Um, so if you could talk about that when you discuss item number one. Also, um, just going forward in the future, um, in the near future, if, if we could consider giving all of our firefighters a pay raise so that their pay is more in line with what other departments in our area are getting, um, I think that we need to be sure that we're taking care of our firefighters so they don't keep leaving for higher paying departments in the area, which is something that happens quite a lot just from my talking to some of the firefighters. So um, that was what I wanted to talk about tonight. Thank you and I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. Okay, we do have an additional caller with phone number ending in 536. If you'd like to speak, please hit star nine. I've updated the link information on our website and our Facebook page. Okay. 
Okay. Do you think that, um, council, do you feel like we've given people enough time to join the meeting? I did put the, um, the phone number and the webinar ID in the comments on the Facebook thread. So it is there. Um, and we have had a few people join successfully. So I know that it, it's working for others as well. Do you feel comfortable closing public comment and moving on? Y'all have to vote. Just nod and let me know if you think we have yes. or shake your head. Yes. No. no. Yes, let's move on. Okay. Okay. With that, I'm going to declare public recognition on agenda related items closed and move now to the regular agenda. And we will begin with item number one, which is second reading on ordinance 02012 54. And for that, Councilman Overton is recognized. Thank you, Mayor. This is ordinance appropriated funds for employee benefits. And I so move. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Overton, a second by Councilman Alexander. Is there any discussion on this? Okay, seeing no one indicating that they wish to speak, we are going to ask Ms. Kittrell to call the roll for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Camp. Aye. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilman Fennell. Yes. Councilman Hayes. Yes. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Seven eyes, zero nays. Thank you, Ms. Kittrell. Um, second reading on ordinance 02012-54 is approved unanimously. Item number two is resolution R2012-65, Councilman Hayes. Yes, this are, um, let's see here, hold on a second. Yeah, this a resolution, this a resolution in support of SIA, SIA grant for the improvement of three intersections for access to the city of Gallatin Industrial Park. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Councilman Hayes, a second. Um, I believe that was Councilman Fan. Fan. Yeah. Okay. Second by Councilman Fan. Opening the floor for any discussion. No one wish. Ms. Kittrell, it froze for a second there on me. Were you taking the vote? Vice Mayor Camp. Aye. Uh, Councilman Alexander. Yeah. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilman Fennell. Yes. Councilman Hayes. Yes. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Mayor Seven Eyes, Zero Nays. Thank you. This is resolution R2012-65 and it passed unanimously. Item number three is resolution R2012-66, Councilman Overton. Thank you, Mayor. This is, this is a resolution uh, R2012-66. I'm going to read the resolution. Pursuant to City of Galton Charter, Article Section 2, um, I hereby um, David... Kellogg is hereby appointed to the position of superintendent of public works for the city of Galpin, Sumner County, Tennessee, effective uh, on uh, or, or about January the 15th, whenever Mr. Gregory retires. The initial salary appropriated for superintendent of public works shall be, uh, my understanding from Ms. Flood, step nine, which is $113,477. I'll make that in the form of a motion. Second that. If I could interject for just a moment, it's the yes. Superintendent of Public Utilities. Yes. Head of Public Works. Sorry, Public yes. Utilities. So we have a motion by Councilman Overton. We have a second by Councilman Alexander. It opens the floor for discussion. I do want to address one thing because I've had a few council members ask me about it. And I'm actually not going to address that. I'm going to ask Ms. Howe McCauley to do it because there was some concern about something that had happened several years ago related to this candidate. And um, I think it was about four years ago and Ms. Howe McCauley was actually the one who conducted the investigation. I knew some of you weren't here at the time. It was something that was handled internally. And I um, just wanted to give her an opportunity to kind of 
go back and explain to you all what the situation was so that you have a level of comfort knowing how that played out. And then I'd also like to give um, Mr. Gregory an opportunity to say anything if he would like to. Um, and Mr. Kellogg was supposed to be joining us, but he may not have been able to, or he may be one of the callers. And um, I will ask if he, if he is trying to reach us to either let me know, either via text or um, the, uh, uh, I don't know if attendees can actually comment on our format of meeting, but to let me know if he is trying to join. But, but Ms. Hamakali, if you would go ahead and just kind of um, revisit that situation and talk about it for us. Yes, so back in February, early February of 2016, the mayor and council received an anonymous letter from someone stating that, uh, quote, porno had been shown during a training at GPU. The HR director at the time and I did an investigation. We interviewed eight people, including the trainer and the trainer readily admitted that he had shown some videos that had inappropriate language and one video and possibly he had shown some photographs to some employees of topless women. Um, there were eight people that were interviewed that were at the, um, in the training and there was more than one supervisor in the training None of the supervisors recalled seeing the videos. Mr. Kellogg stated during his interview that he was not present during that portion of the training. Um, he said that he had stepped out of the meeting. He was not present. And there was a discussion about that evidently at GPU. And after the investigation, there was a report that was made and Mr. Um, Kellogg and others were given a written reprimand for uh, basically lack of attention at the training. And uh, also our sexual harassment policy was reviewed and measures were put in place to ensure that this did not occur again. And that is basically a summary of what occurred uh, about five years ago because the training was actually in December of uh, the previous year, December 8th and 10th of 2015. So do any council members have any questions about that for Ms. Hyma Colley? No, oh, I just appreciate the clarification. I know someone spread it all over Facebook today that and made him believe that Mr. Kellogg was a you know done something inappropriate himself. And that's not the case. He wasn't even at the meeting. So yeah, what I can say to that is that no one could um, identify whether or not Kellogg was in the meeting during the time and he stated he was not. Thank you. But you did say he was reprimanded for that? Yes, a written he was uh, a written reprimand was given to him by Mr. Gregory following the report that um, the HR director and I made following our investigation. So that they would take efforts to um, better oversee the training materials for future trainers. Um, you know, I view it as the responsibility ultimately was with the trainer and the company that provided the trainer. Um, who uh, it is beyond my it, uh, when I when I got that letter, I couldn't believe that any professional trainer would do something so ridiculous, and then to actually do an investigation and find out that yes, they did. Um, it was it was quite crazy. So needless to say, we did not pay that company, nor have we used them again. So, yes, I will say that that uh, that trainer has been blocked from coming in, and there were measures put in place. Now the supervisors are required to review all training materials of, uh, prior to any training, and they also give out our harassment policy when we have a third party party contractor that comes in to do any training. And we have not had any other um, instances of that to my knowledge. Yeah. So anyone coming in to train is advised that they can't show anything inappropriate, which again, who would think that we would have to do that in this day and time, but we are doing that so that we can prevent that from happening in the future. So are there any, are there any questions related to that? Sounds like Mr. Kellogg was not at fault. That's what I think. 
Well, again, I really feel like the trainer was at fault, but um, in a situation like that, we do have a responsibility to um, figure out a way to keep it from happening in the future. I'm going to give you the material first. Okay. Okay, so I hope that we have um, put that to rest. I do want to ask Mr. Gregory if there's anything that he would like to say relevant to who may be his potential successor. And you don't have to. I've told you all along, I'm 100% for Mr. Kellogg. That's all. It's all right. And Mr. Kellogg, I still do not have an indication. He's here. Oh, he's here with you? He's here. Perfect, perfect. Since he's been trying to get on the meeting by Zoom and by phone, but he's there with you, so we're in good shape. Is he popping into your seat? There he is. All right, so Council, Mr. Kellogg is actually in Mr. Gregory's seat for the purpose of um, you guys asking him any questions that you may like to ask him or any discussion that you may like to have at this point. So floor is open. Indicate if you would like to be recognized and speak. Mr. Kellogg, is there anything you would like to say? I would just like to thank you and the council for the opportunity to be considered for the position. Um, just know that I'm committed to uh, working with you and the council uh, to continue the growth of the department, uh, continue to serve our customers and to work on the morale of our employees. And how many years did you say you had in with public utilities? 30 years. Okay. All that with Gallatin. Well, 31 in utilities, uh, 30 of them here in Gallatin. And again, I, I, I may say, Mr. Kellogg, and I, and I had mentioned it to you uh, before during the interview how appreciative I was of you wearing uh, the mask because of this uh, uh, COVID 19. So, again, I thank you for professionalism and uh, uh, I just pray and hope that uh, you continue to do a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I think most citizens realize how fortunate um, the city of Gallatin is to have such a robust utility system that's been so well planned so that we have such great capacity, um, excess capacity. And I think that is um, due to the planning by Mr. Gregory and by Mr. Kellogg and um, we probably have one of the best utilities in the state. It's unique that we have water, sewer, and gas um, and ample capacity with all. And um, we get a lot of compliments on our system and, and the way that it operates. And, and I do feel um, that Mr. Kellogg is poised to continue that trajectory. I'm looking um, forward to um, the future and working with whomever the leader there may be, because I do believe that there are even better opportunities to um, make the utility even better. But um, we'll be celebrating Mr. Gregory in the weeks ahead, and, and he is due lots and lots of praise, and I know he will get it from us and from the community. We may not get to have our celebration as timely as we would like, but we will certainly celebrate him. So, um, Council. Questions, comments? I think we should give him a shot. <laughs> so, Council, do you feel ready to vote on this? May I ask Ms. Kittrell to call the roll for the vote? Yes. Okay, Ms. Kittrell. Vice Mayor Camp. I don't see him. Uh, um, Councilman Alexander. 100% yes. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilman Fennell. Yes. Councilman Hayes. Abstain. Pardon me. Abstain. You prick. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Did y'all hear David Gregory's comment? Now, Ms. Kittrell, um, I actually vote on this as well, I believe, right, Ms. Tamakali? Yeah because it's the hiring of a department head. That's correct. Percent okay. to the, order, the mayor also votes on All right. And Mayor Brown. I vote yes. 
I have six eyes, one no vote, or not a, 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 a one abstention, and Mr. Camp didn't vote, so. Not a no vote, but it did not vote. Thank you. Right. Okay, well, with that, Mr. Kel uh, Kellogg, I do believe congratulations are in order. And I will look forward to working with you and, uh, and generating the opportunities that are ahead for us. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council. Okay, so resolution R2012-66 appointed Mr. David Kellogg and the salary that was named, which was 113,477. Uh, Is that right, Councilman Overton? Look to be sure. One thirteen four seventy seven. Okay, and it passed with a vote of six zero one abstention. Or was yeah six zero one abstention. Thank you all. We'll move now to item number four, which is an application to close the street. That's mine. And like I said, this was something I was supposed to do under other business last week, and I failed to, but I had the opportunity to add it to this special called meeting. So this is an application to close. Um, um, West Main Street from North Water to South Foster, and it is for one hour, which is 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. It's the First United Methodist Church's annual Christmas Eve service that happens, um, they call it their midnight service, and they're going to be doing it outside this year for the public and for um, COVID safety, I'm certain. So, um, it does have the appropriate signatures, both from the businesses and from the department heads. And I would entertain a motion from this Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Councilman Alexander, second by Councilwoman Love. Is there any discussion? All right, Ms. Kittrell, if you would call the roll for the vote, please. Vice Mayor Camp. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Fan? Yes. Councilman Fennell? Yes. Councilman Hayes? Yes. Councilwoman Love? Yes. And Councilman Overton? Yes. Thank you. Six ayes and zero nays. Okay, so the application to close the street is approved unanimously. And that concludes our agenda. And with that, our meeting is concluded because we have no other items of business. I do want to mention that sure. we all wish. Councilman Alexander, a happy birthday here in a couple of days on the 18th. And I certainly wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I have chicken, John D. Say no, I took my wife out. I got married on my birthday. I made a say, John, <laughs> say, say the Christmas carol that you sang the other day to cast us hey, away. We are adjourned. Good night. Thank everybody. you, man. Say that Christmas carol, John D. Merry Christmas, all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.